Is there one place that you have been that has really just scared you to death? You know, there's, there's, a, there's a bunch of places I've had the opportunity to travel over the years. I've been in 23 countries, six continents doing this stuff mm -hmm. across the states. Uh, Castle Huska in the old Czech Republic was one. They say that was occupied by Nazi Germany during World War II to do spiritual research. I was up in the attic, there was this big creepy looking shadow in the corner. And at one point my cameraman had to leave to go do something. It's easy to be big and brave when you get like two dudes with you. <laughs> but when they leave and you're alone in the dark and there's something looking at you, you just stand there like, okay, what do I do? You know, right. so these things happen, man. It's weird. Opinions, viewpoints, and beliefs presented on this program do not necessarily reflect those of the management, the affiliates, and broadcast partners, or the sponsors. Listener discretion is advised. Scarefest Radio, the radio you can see. And hello, everyone, and good evening. Original broadcast date, January 26, 2024. Yes, this is Scarefest TV. Now, I do have to announce one slight change to our lineup tonight. I've never done this in the history of Scarefest TV until tonight that I can remember anyway. Um, I had to pre-record Dustin's interview. The reason being, so don't be asking him questions in the chat room. He's not actually with us tonight. He got booked like last Sunday or Monday. It was like last weekend um, for the Lone Star Paracon. So uh, he was going to be uh, on a plane, I think, tonight. So anyway, Dustin uh, gave us a great interview, though. And I did want to uh, uh, let you know that he is not with us live. But me and Katie sat down with him and gave had a really good time earlier this week. Now, um, tonight, also you can look for Joe Lewis will have a double feature. He's got two documentaries that are streaming now. Living with Chucky and the Robert England story. Um, and, and we're going to be announcing a contest tonight to win Scarefest tickets. You can win uh, three-day passes or um, 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 Weekend Plus passes. We'll be announcing that at the uh, bottom of the hour. And also... We are giving away two tickets to Bet City Con tonight. We will be doing that at the Facebook slash The Scarefest. That is not the fan group. That is the Scarefest business page. So if you're interested in that, you will need to be in that chat room to win. That's the only one we're going to monitor for the winning answer. Now to our interview. Welcome to the show, Dustin. I just want to say I'm a little disappointed you didn't dress for the occasion like well, you did in that clip. Uh, the, the, uh, the, the Mad Hatter outfit is unfortunately in the cleaners currently. So oh, darn it. Well, I know yeah. this was, you know, you, you, you're, you're in a tizzy, you're in a tizzy and everything. That's why we had to pre-record the episode. Um, yeah. I was doing the math. Now, everybody, Dustin Perry, I want to say, is is probably... Not only the single nicest person that I've met in the uh, celebrity slash paranormal field, he, I would, Dustin, I want you to know, I always refer to you as the one guy that I really consider a friend in the paranormal you, celebrity field. Um, Thank you, sir. It means a lot. You're very kind. Um, but, but also, I got really depressed because I did the math. Uh, Dustin and I have not been in the same building since 2015. We were in a, um, New York, somewhere in New York, we did a con together, and uh, the, what stands out, this is how nice he was. About midnight, maybe 1 a.m., we were at the VIP party, and Dustin, I called my wife, and Dustin vouched that I was behaving. So, <laughs> so if you ever need a wingman, Dustin Perry is, is, is your guy. He will. Yeah, I can, I can be bought for a beer or a small glass of rum. We can make anything happen, whatever you want, brother. Now, the, uh, of course, now, okay, now this is not going to be as bad as the episode where Dustin and I sat on Paranormal Filler and discussed goat, uh, tree climbing goats for the entire episode. Still a good topic, though. Is, is that still a good, something you keep up with? 
I, you know, I, 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 uh, I really do enjoy goats quite a bit. Uh, I also fancy turtles. And recently, I've diversified and I've branched out into deep sea creatures. I follow the feeds on, on Instagram. There's a lot of cool stuff on there. That is actually something. Uh, one of my questions. Um, okay. Since I've known Dustin, he has developed into this fucking artist, I guess you would call him. Um, he not only okay, well, you've got what three actual books now, not counting the coloring books. What do you have to right. three books now? Uh, five, five, five. Oh, that's right. Yeah, I think one is like Katie had. I do. Yeah. I've got and the devil shivered somewhere yeah. in my collection. I do have um, what's next? Yep. And uh, but then while I, I was two with Barry, I did two with Barry. So there's the three I did alone, the two I did with Mr. Barry Fitzgerald. Okay, and uh, um, but then while I was looking at those on Amazon, you've went into the coloring book business. Quite disturbing coloring books, but coloring right. books nonetheless. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That uh, that came about, and it's um, and, and I'm, I'm completely fine with talking about these things because you know, working in the paranormal, I think that we we also kind of embrace and view death in a different way. And then, unfortunately, this uh, this past summer, um, my mom was ill, and she'd been sick for like ten years, but she was she was approaching the end, and so we we're in hospice care at the house, and I would had to stay up all night, kind of taking care of her, administering the medicines and such. And uh, just to kind of get my mind off things, I started playing with the different AI programs. I was like, you know, maybe I'll make myself an old school Halloween coloring book like I would get at the drugstore when I was a kid, you know, like, and uh, I get into these AI programs and I just, I fell down this damn rabbit hole. And then I would take the images, I'd bring them into Photoshop, I'd clean them up, I'd do different things with them, play around with it. And it's, uh, it has become a real passion. And I'm very thankful to say that, uh, you know the, the the profit margins are not huge. I mean, they're they're coloring books, you know, but uh, but they bring people a lot of joy. And so, we, yeah, we get the spooky pages coloring books. Then we get a Christmas line now. We started with festive pages, and then I've got two I've done uh, for mental health, um, where I'm just trying to get people to to focus on how they feel and to open up, because um, you know I do a lot of, of suicide prevention work, mental health right. work. Uh, so I've got these coloring books to design so that you can try to color how you feel. And uh, yeah, it's and it's fun. I love coloring. I want to go back to be a little kid. I want to drink out of a hose and run around topless and barefoot and just enjoy life. Yeah, but the 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 cover of Spooky Pages, Krampus Night, that's fucking oh, yeah. disturbing, dude. Yeah, that's... Krampus is crazy. There's 43 <laughs> illustrations of different ideas about Krampus, and some of them, to be honest, kind of looks like he's in an S and M club. He's got all these leathers and. Whip- <laughs> What is going on here? But, it's, you know, it's fun. It's naughty and nice around Christmas time. Uh, now, one more before I turn it over to Katie. Um, now, how many kids are you up to now? Oh, I, I I was a one and done fellow. So my wife was married previously. So we had two boys from her marriage. Uh, they are both older and out of the house. My wife and I have uh, one daughter together who is 16, driving, working, and, uh, and doing very well in school. We're going to tour college campuses pretty soon. So uh, it's uh, it's been crazy, man. I'm feeling old though, brother. I just I don't know. I'm always I just work. I go to sleep. I wake up. I go to the gym. I work, and people are getting older. I'm just trying to stay alive. It's crazy. You're roughly the age now that we probably were. I was when we met, probably right about there. You think so? Okay, somewhere okay. in the neighborhood, That's... somewhere in that area. You know, um, all um, that matters is you're still devilishly handsome. I'll tell you. I get that a lot. Only now it's I'm a uh, what do they call it. Um, uh, uh, silver fox. Oh, congratulations! Yeah, yeah I, I I've, I've moved I, into that category. I believe I referred to you many moons ago as the Jimmy Buffett of our of our paranormal genre. Yes, I, I and I, you've you've probably seen me in this shirt before. I've had this some bitch forever. Um, yeah, uh, the the reason I ask on the kids, oddly enough, I knew I remember the little girl. Yeah, but I went. How many kids? I asked the internet, Google. How many kids do you have? And it went from zero to three. There, oh. There's a lot of conflicting information about you on the internet. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, that's good. I keep it vague. I keep it vague. <laughs> you know, but honestly, like in the in the beginning, I was very concerned. Like I never, you guys know me. Like I don't think of myself as as anything particularly worth pursuing. But you get some creepers out there. You get some stalkers out there. And I just wanted to protect my wife and our children. And, um, you know, because there were some weird, stupid threats that I'm sure were just hollow and empty. Um, but um, if it's one thing against me, I don't really care. But against the family, is like, 
that that crosses that line. It takes a lot to cross the line with me, but that's that's the line there. So, well, one of the websites said you were single, just so you know. Oh well, you know, um, that's uh, that's inaccurate. Uh, that would cause me a lot of trouble. So, so we'll clarify that one. At least. Katie, over to you. Um, hi, I'm a big fan, and uh, you're actually one of the reasons that I started investigating. Uh, what what made you start investigating the paranormal? Thank you so much, Katie. That's very kind of you to say. Very sweet. Um, for me, um, my uh, what I like to call my gateway ghost uh, started with uh, what we now classify as a shadow figure. Uh, it was one of the humanoid shaped ones, of six feet tallish, and just standing in my childhood uh, doorway uh, of my bedroom and just petrified me as a kid. I didn't know what it was, didn't know why it was there, and so I just covered my head and I said all my prayers. Um, I lived there till I was seventeen, and I never saw it there again. Which, honestly, I was thankful at the time. But uh, that kind of just got me started on this journey. And I started going to the local libraries because, um, you know, we didn't have the internet when I was a kid. So I had to learn about this stuff somewhere. So I would go to the libraries and I would get books about you know, haunted New England legends and things like that. And, um, you know, I started driving, started going to uh, abandoned places, which I do not, you know, I, I don't suggest people do. But um, that's how I had started. And that was... Uh, that was a long time ago, but I still love it. As shadow figures are still the thing that intrigued me the most. They're kind of scary. Uh, like, I I have my own paranormal team now. And, like, the only time I've ever been scared was at Waverly Hills. Uh, mm -hmm. I saw a shadow figure on the fourth floor by myself, and that's, I was like, no, just not right now. <laughs> like, like, just <laughs> not by myself. <laughs> Uh, Waverly is uh, Waverly's a great place, but yeah, anytime you encounter anything by yourself, it can be very, um, you know, very concerning and, and kind of off-putting. I kind of feel like the shadow people get a bad rap. I think that we've been like preconditioned in our experience to think certain things, right? And like shadowy things, just by the term, you know, came from the shadows. It was a shadowy type person, always kind of has this connotation of something negative, you know, but like we're just judging them on, on what they appeared to be to us, but we don't know how they see us. We don't know where they're coming from. We don't, you know, so I, I just think they're misunderstood. I think that we need to give them a little bit more time. Um, and my encounters with the various ones in various countries and such, I've never recorded any audio to go with these things. They're just kind of there. They kind of lurk around, they move in, they move out. Um, you know, then you get into like shadow man and hat man and uh, the ones with the glowing eyes and there's other classifications and some of those may seem to have like different agendas, but I kind of feel like just the classic humanoid shadow figure um, definitely can be frightening anytime something that shows up that's just not normal to us. But I don't think there's anything actually inherently bad about them at all. I, I like I think I was just more surprised, and but I felt like he was just curious of who I was, right? Um, I, and I just said a few bad words and kept going. Um, <laughs> <laughs> They're probably used to that. Yeah, yeah, it's okay. yeah. so. Um, but like, so you, I did some research on your IMDb, and you've been on over sixty episodes of Ghost Hunters. Which is your favorite? Oh, geez, um, I didn't even know I was on that many. <laughs> um, I for the states, um, Saint Augustine is really always going to be one of the ones that is top of the list because that was the first time I actually saw a full body apparition. So when I was a kid, I see that shadow figure. I spent yeah. years going into old buildings and random places looking for activity. But the first time I see a full body apparition is in that lighthouse at St. Augustine. We had video of the shadow figure leaning over the, the railing there. We had EVPs. We had disembodied voices. Uh, return visits for events. We get a lot of Spanish dialect uh, coming through for EVPs. Mm -hmm. But I remember being on that staircase looking up and just seeing with my own eyes the, the pleats on this woman's dress, the curls in her hair. And Brian and I just were like frozen looking at it. I just... All I can think of is I've been spending years looking for these things, and now I see it, and I don't know what the hell I'm supposed to do next. I, that was the episode, like I said, that got me into ghost hunting, because, like, it just, and I could tell as a viewer that you all were thrilled that you caught that. Like, like we, my parents and I, we would, like, rewind it and be like, look how excited they are. This is real. This really happened. Um, and I got to go to the lighthouse. I did one of their dark of the moon tours and, uh, it, it's an interesting building. It's, it's so uh, neat. Is what, what's your favorite overseas? 
Uh, overseas, we went to a place, the, uh, the Clock Air Base Hospital uh, in the Philippines. And that was a really cool place. We'd been there two or three nights for that investigation. And to this day, that is the only place I've ever investigated where the laundry list of claims, you know, we're going to see a lady in white, you're going to hear footsteps, the devil shows up and does a shot of tequila, like all this nonsense people tell you happens. And you go to the place, it's like, yeah, we got like one scratchy EVP in four nights, you know, and you're like, it is what it is. You know, it's not to say those claims are bogus, but it's not as regular as people say they are. But the, the Clark Air Base was the only place I've ever been um, in over 31 years of investigating that every claim that they reported to us, we had witnessed or we documented. We had seen the wispy white shadowy figure. We had recorded um, footsteps. We had heard the footsteps. We recorded disembodied voices. Um, we recorded uh, EVP. So we had all these things. And when the, the best part was, it was cool to catch all this stuff. But when we, we go ahead and we bring these recordings and we tell our, our experiences to the client, this, this elderly man who was once a very proud man, he was a security guard for the place, he became like the laughing stock of the town. People said he was drunk. People said he was crazy. He just broke down in tears when he heard the EVPs, when he heard the recordings of the, the footsteps and, and the voices that were commenting on hearing because it finally gave him that validation. And I think that for those of us who have had those paranormal experiences as a one-off and then nothing else ever happens, we, we start to question it, you know. Uh, but especially when people say, you know, disparaging things about you because of your stories. So it was kind of nice to give that guy some peace of mind as well. Um, can, can you tell a difference? I don't know if this makes sense. Can you tell a difference in international spirits and like the American spirit? Because I, I watch a lot of ghost videos online and I feel like there's a difference in appearances or something. And it might be all bullshit online, but you never know. Yeah. A lot of the online stuff, especially now that things should be created with so many apps and everything, it's always kind of tough to, to take anything at face value. But, um, you know, we definitely record, even just here in the States, like, you know, they'll stick with St. Augustine. You know, we get recordings in a very uh, old-sounding Spanish dialect that, you know, we attribute to the, the early settlers of the area. Uh, up here yeah. in New England, we, we still record, um, you know, images of uh, people in colonial clothing, but yet we'll go out into the woods and some of the tribal lands and you'll get recordings of Native Americans. So there's definitely layers of activity. Uh, and overseas, we would find the same thing there. We would, I remember being in Ireland and getting a very old form of Gaelic, you know, but then we also get them speaking what sounds more like modern day English. So there's definitely layers of activity based on the people that were there at the time. And it was it's really cool to just explore all these countries and to learn more about them while I was out there. That's kind of scary. While I ponder on that, I think we're going to go to our first break. Horror. Movie. Fan. Four. Life. On Facebook. Find us. Four watch parties. Four news. Four memes. Four friends. Four life. Horror movie fans for life. Join us. And we're back with Dustin Perry, a guest for Scarefest 2024. Um, mm -hmm. I Now, the one thing I did not find, I, I should have looked, and it might have been... 2014 or so. I'm trying to remember the last time you were in Lexington with us at Scarefest. Uh, oh, man. I don't know. I remember <laughs> um, to doom, 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 to doom, doom. But Corey Feldman was there. There you go. Now, someone in the chat room now will, will know what year that was because our. It was 2014 because my first year was 2013. Steven Tang over there. And then the next year, like the whole fucking. We all came next year. Yep. 2014. Yep. Yeah. Um, um, now, 
Okay, what I want to get back to, to your books a little bit because I want to. I want you to get the things that, that pay you money. I want you to. I want. I want you to profit from this. But Thank you, brother. now I want to say, and the, and the devil sharded or whatever the name, the devil shiver, shivered. Yes. Um, great book, everybody. I read. It, I loved. It. I remember what I remember most about this. I actually read this most of it, not all of it, because the flight wasn't that long. I was reading this on an airplane going to a paranormal convention. Now, five star reviews all the way across to Amazon, except okay, autobiography, people. Autobiography. Was it, was it your review? Did you no. Kind of watch the review? Okay. <laughs> this is a talkative and dull book that never really goes anywhere. The author talks about himself constantly. Stay away unless you like narcissist rates of a confused individual. Autobiography that talks yeah, about yourself. Cool. That's that's a terrible, terrible way to write, Dustin. <laughs> Let me tell you about everything else in my world, but never mention my own personal story here in my autobiography. But it, uh, I believe this is the one that does have one of my favorite stories ever, and that was where you were um, up to do, I believe it was uh, called Paranormal Highway. Was that the Oh, yeah. yeah par- oh, wait, no, so that's what's next. Paranormal Highway is in what's next. Okay, well, so it's the other book I have. See, I knew that a book was around here somewhere. Yeah. And... <laughs> Okay, everybody, uh, what's next? That, that's the book I should be talking about. But the point is, t- Dustin, share with the public why the focus group did not put you on that show. So, so I'm on Ghost Hunters International. Things have been going well. Tired of being away from the family. Start to pitch my own show. Want to stay stateside. Go out, actually film the sizzle reels. They bought the, they bought the, the idea and everything. Um, the show uh, becomes uh, the the Jack Osborne uh, first paranormal show, um, but uh, my own show I get removed of uh, removed from because the focus group said I was wearing mom jeans. What? That was nothing about no, I mean, nothing about my you know my my on camera personality or you know my investigative techniques, my sincerity toward the spirits or respect toward the people. It looks like he's wearing mom jeans. Now listen. Maybe there's people that like mom jeans, maybe people that don't. Um, almost any photo you see of me at any event, I'm wearing like acid washed, like ripped up 1980s rocker jeans. So and the I guy don't... works out. I'll throw that in there too. The guy, the but... guy works out. Okay. <laughs> but if your mom wears jeans like that, she sounds like she's probably more in the MILF category. You know, I mean, <laughs> that's good. That's good. But yeah, removed from my own show. Uh, and, and no resentment toward Jack or Katrina. I'm glad. They all got to do it. Um, you know, hell, I got paid for producing it for a year and a half, so whatever. But uh, but it was supposed to be my show. But, uh, yeah, mom jeans. But, uh, you know, what are you going to do? Now, what um, – okay, uh, Katie got the uh, – the what took you into ghost hunting. What took you into coloring books? Take me – I mean, what – I understand writing autobiographies and yeah. stuff about your life. I have a blog um, yeah. that people pay me a little bit of money to, to read. But um, as far as actually coloring books, what inspired you to do that? I just, I've always loved um, the coloring since I was a little kid. But I really enjoy things now in this life that kind of bring me back to those those feelings and those sensations and also just kind of quiet the mind a bit. You know, this world is so noisy. There's so much stuff going on all the time, all around us. To, to sit down and, and to start to color is very therapeutic. It kind of takes you out of the realm of what's going on all around you. Everything kind of becomes like background noise. And even your brain, all the worries of the day, kind of drift away in this just quiet, mellow little moment where you're just coloring and doing your thing. Um, it was actually suggested to me that I do so uh, by man, my manager, Linda, because um, she she knows me very well, the things we talk about, and a lot of my motivational lectures always focus on the importance of our our child, our inner child, and our childhood innocence. And uh, so, what better way to kind of really represent who I am, the things I care about, uh, than trying to support people to to get back to that? And uh, I love when people send me like on on Facebook or whatever, and Twitter, they'll they'll upload photos of their their coloring and everything. And it's cool to just see the way they interpret the pictures differently and how these things come to life. So uh, one gentleman even asked me, 
if he could reproduce one of the pictures for his uh, his classroom so the kids could color him for Halloween. So I was like, this is so cool. Like, so it's uh, it's just been a fun little passion, you know, and um, I don't sleep a hell of a lot. And if I'm too tired to work on writing, like seriously, I can just mess around with designs and come up with some cool and crazy thing. Katie, back to you. How did you get the name Paranormal Rockstar? <laughs> that 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 old one doesn't seem to die. It still comes out. Every <laughs> once in a while. Um, I mean, I keep the website just because I know somebody else buying it at this point. But um, that came from a gentleman named Mike Roberts uh, out of North Carolina area, and I was overseas somewhere. I don't know where, somewhere in Europe, and I was doing a, an interview with him via Skype for his Paranormal magazine. And um, he was asking about the hardships of, of being on the road, you know, because it's a lot of fun, of course. But he was asking about, you know, how it is in terms of just getting through life out there. And I was saying about, you know, you feel like some some weird kind of like musician, like just you, you pack up your, your things, you, you go, you travel, you're investigating, you know, it's like being on stage, you're like a huge rush. And then you're back in the hotel again, and then you're packing your crap up and traveling again. I was just saying, like, it's all it is for me. And, you know, I really miss just being at home with my wife and my daughter. And he said, well, at least when you get home, you can tell your daughter when she grows up that, you know, her dad traveled the world like a paranormal rock star. I was like, yeah, it's pretty damn good, man. I'm going to hold on to that. Uh, to be honest with you, though, I just always thought, like, you've always had the best hair on Ghost Hunters. I do appreciate that. I, it's a little late in the night, so I've kind of loosened up the product now, but yes. <laughs> like, I was telling Wes, I was like, man, his, like, intro on the old Ghost Hunters series was the best. Like, like they had to be the most dramatic, like, like, and it's just the best. <laughs> like, it always made me happy. <laughs> so, okay, so let me tell you the inside story on that. We were, we were filming these intros for, some of them they took, like, from location. Mine they needed to film it because I wasn't with them all the time. So they needed to film mine like in the stairwell to the, the taps, um, the taps basement, like where we would film our little meeting segments and they're like, turn around, but like, look like you're scared. I'm like, I don't, I don't know what that looks like. It's like, I don't know what you want me to do. And every time I did it, like I was laughing, I was screwing up and it took like Jay, like trying to pop a balloon at a random time to get a reaction out of me. But it still came off like I was just mugging for the camera. I was like, whatever. I just, I don't know what you want me to do. I'm not an actor. But um, that's yeah. my favorite, though. That, okay, that actually like scratches some like inner ghost hunter's itch for me. Cause like, cause I was always like, why is his so fucking cool? Like, <laughs> it's like a spooky full house intro. Like, <laughs> Well, thank you, Katie. I appreciate that. <laughs> My favorite. Um, so, let me. How did you get into motivational speaking? Um, so that I, so many of these things come from when I was overseas. Like, so you know, we'd have one day off a, a week, one one day off to yourself, and because uh, we would film for two or three nights, we do evidence review by ourselves for like a day, and then we'd have the the reveal, the presentation, all those scenes, and then you have one day, and then we travel. And um, so when we got that one night off, I sometimes instead of going out, what I like to do is I would bring DVDs of American TV shows. And I had like my own little time slots, almost like I was back home watching TV, just to make me feel like not so far away. And um, then I would, I would, if I could, if I was lucky enough to have a, a lot of times we didn't even have places that had heat or hot water. But the few times I had a place that had a hot water, heat and a tub, I would lay in the tub. I would have a little bubble bath. I'd have some wine. Really enjoy myself a bit, you know. But then I would go on to uh, this thing called MySpace back in the day when people were still happy and the sun was still yellow and there was life in the world. And on MySpace, I would answer questions uh, from people that write in. A lot of people just, I hate you. I hate your visor. I hate your stupid hair. I hate the way you turn around in the open. And I was what? like, yeah, whatever. But um, I would always just tell them, thank you for watching. Like, I, I don't return hate for hate or darkness for darkness. It's it's fine. Um, but there were people that would send me like orb photos, uh, questions about paranormal theory. And um, that was all made sense to me. But then every once in a while, I'd get like a love life advice question or work advice question. And I'd answer because what the hell am I doing? I'm just hanging out in this hotel room. Um, but then unfortunately, I started getting some messages from people about self-harm, people that were involved in cutting, 
uh, and people that were having thoughts about suicide. And some people say, well, it's because of the paranormal. That's how you people are, which is ridiculous. Like, yeah, a lot of us wear maybe a little bit more black and skulls than others. But I dare say, I think we actually appreciate this life and death more than yeah. a lot of other people because we think about it so much. And death can be a very positive thing. But um, I realize that for whatever reason, if I watch a movie, there's a character, a fictional character that I'm like, oh, I would probably hang out with that person in real life, you know, like. Like you, like you read a Harry Potter book or something, and you're like, oh, this is my favorite character. We we would go at butter bears together. This would make sense. Yeah. But when you're watching a reality show, these are real people. At least we're supposed to be. Some reality shows, like I don't know, these dating shows and stuff I see on TV, I'm like, wow, this looks ridiculous. Or these people are really awful people. But but on our show, it's like we're all just represented as who we are. And for some reason, people that are are having these thoughts of self harm, or or perhaps suicide feel connected to me enough where they want to write to me about it. And so I always wrote to them right away. And I just tried to tell them, like, listen, I'm not a therapist. I'm not always going to be here to help, but I can at least listen. And um, and I always put them every night before I sign off on Twitter, I always put the same phone number for uh, the American Foundation for Suicide Prevention and their website, which is uh, AFSP.org. I always post those because I just believe in leaving the light on in case somebody needs something. And I know let, a lot of times at nighttime, it can be very difficult um, for all of us to go through. And I just, I, I tie in my, my paranormal work because I, I, every lecture I do, I always say the same thing. You know, we are, we are spirits going through a human experience. We're not from here and we don't stay here. But while we are here, I believe we could be helping each other out. We could be laughing together, learning together, crying together. Um, but the key part of it is is growing together while we're here. And so I had this small platform and people wanted to write to me. And so I started to do motivational lectures and suicide prevention lectures uh, anywhere from middle schools up to corporate America. Um, I run a little Patreon channel where we do uh, an Acolytes of Kindness project where we go out and try to help out our communities every week. And um, yeah, it's just, it's a big part of who I am and it's the, it's the, you know, like uh, Wes was saying about, you know, doing things that get you paid money. It's probably the part of all my jobs that pay me the least, but they're the ones that are the most meaningful for me and the ones I want to do more of. I, I think I, I probably was one of them. I didn't write to you about suicide or anything like that on MySpace, but I definitely was somebody that wrote to you guys way more than I should have. I sent Taps a Christmas card. I remember oh, doing that's it. very nice. No, yeah, it's we so cringy, man. Like, oh, I was like, "Hey, guys, big fan." Yeah, no, Thank we have them Christmas. all in the office. We have them all in the office. There's a big mail um, thing in the uh, in the main office, right behind where they would film us. Um, the things that were were creepy sometimes is when we were filming in one of the offices. There was like an old mail slot in the front door. And people would just like open the mail slot and look in while we're in there. Oh. Just, just knock if you'd like. Like that's okay. <laughs> well, at least I probably I would have just peeked through the window. But uh, <laughs> I think we're coming up on our halfway mark, so let's go cut to commercial. Are you a fan of horror movies, books, comics, music, and collectibles? Rumorg magazine is for you. Subscribe today to receive 6 or 12 print issues annually and join me, Executive Editor Andrea Sibisati, on an ongoing journey through the horror genre of the past, present, and future. Plus, get access to unmissable special editions such as A Century of Witches, 50 Years of Gore Cinema, British Horror Movies, and so much more. Through more the world's premier horror and culture and entertainment magazine since 1997. Accept no substitute. Returning for Scarefest 2024, Danielle Harris from the Halloween franchise, and of course, 105 actress movie credits on IMDb, a prolific artist, and she's coming back this year. Next up, Mr. C.J. Graham, Friday the 13th of part six, it was, played Jason. So we got another Jason. We're like Jason heavy this year. C.J. Graham will be coming to Scarefest 20. 
24. And tonight's final announcement, Tyler Maine. Tyler Maine from uh, uh, the Halloween. He played Michael Myers in the Halloween franchise. And, and, always in my heart, Sabretooth from the original X-Men movie. That's one that's important to me. But yes, we got Tyler Maine. So, that's our celebrity announcements for tonight. I'll remind everybody, February 1st at 12.01 a.m., just to create a little confusion, yes, that is when tickets go on sale to the public. 12.01 a.m., yes, you have to stay up till midnight, January 31st, if you want to get a ticket. That's that's the rules. That's the way it works. <laughs> Um, Scarf at 16, we are taking speaker applications. Those are on the website. Go to scarefestweekend.com. Click the, I think it, I don't know if it says seminars or speakers, whatever it says. But anyway, we are taking applications for speakers and seminars and classes and stuff for Scarefest 16. And also, the film festival is open for business. You can uh, send in your uh, Scarefest Horror Film Festival entries or make sure your friends that are in the film business know that we are taking our entries via Film Freeway. Go to ScarefestWeekend.com and click the link. Joanna and I will be at Vet CityCon. Vet CityCon. We're going to be there on the uh, first weekend of March, March 2nd and 3rd. And um, just... In celebration of that, I am going to give away, at the end of the announcements, I will be giving away two Vet City Con tickets. So if you're in the Bowling Green area, if you're in the western Kentucky area, anywhere over in there, Nashville, whatever the hell, and you want to come see Vet City Con, but you don't want to be out the money for the tickets, I'm going to give away two tickets for a trivia question that I will drop at the end of the announcements. Hey, if you're on TikTok, be sure to follow the official Scarefest account. We've got the best of Scarefest TV going on there. Uh, one, maybe sometimes two entries a day, but it is a great place. And we're going to be running another. Hey, I, I want to go ahead and throw this out there. We're going to be going ahead and doing another contest. But I'll, I'll talk about that here in just a moment. And this is the moment. If you would like to win... Oh, a weekend plus pass or a weekend pass. What we're going to do is if you will make a horror themed or paranormal themed TikTok type video, and that means, okay, so what we're going to do two classes of it. Um, we either want it to be 60 seconds or under or under 10 minutes. Okay. So it can be one or the other, but the point is um, we're going to do it through the month of February the best one will get a week in plus pass. The uh, anybody that enters, if we use your video, you will get a weekend pass. Okay, weekend pass. If you if if you if we use your video on on our social media, including TikTok, Instagram, etc., you will get a weekend pass. But if we deem you the winner, you'll get a weekend plus pass. And just to sweeten the pot, if your video goes quote unquote viral, we will give you two of them. There. Adrian don't even know about that one. But anyway, so that's that's coming up. Uh starting anytime. Go to the website, scarefestweekend.com. You can uh just um scarf don't go to scarefest go to scarefest radio. My email's on there, scarefestradio at gmail.com. Sorry about that. But or you can just tag me in a video, or whatever. The Central Kentucky Mystical Market is coming up February 10th and 11th. Central KY Mystical Market, February 10th and 11th. Follow them on Facebook, centralkymysticalmarket.com at the Clarion Hotel on Newtown Pike, Lexington, Kentucky. And yes, I will be there in February doing really bad tarot. Also, if you'd like to join my Patreon project, I'm up just shy of 40 members right now. Um, I'm in 30 something, 37, 38, some, something like that. There's several levels. You can join for a dollar. You can join for $5. Um, right now there's not a whole lot of difference. I'm just, any paying member gets to see the vlog. Sleepaway camp cosplay is in my future. If I get that up to 50, if I get up to 50, I am going to do sleepaway camp cosplay next year at Scarefest. That is at patreon.com slash scarefestradio, patreon.com slash 
Scarefest Radio. And if you want to go to the ScarefestRadio.com website, I've got a link there for um, a little uh, charity thing for the Irreverent Warriors. They are bringing veterans together. Basically, it's a charity to benefit, uh, to try to stop veteran suicide. Joanna's in that. Um, that's her on the screen there. And go back to me now. Anita is now monitoring the Scarefest Weekend Facebook page. Not the fan page, the actual business page. The question is, first person to say, what is the movie poster tagline from the 1985 movie House? The first person that she sees post the movie, uh, the tagline for the 1985 movie House. And we'll announce that after the next part of the interview. And we're back with Dustin Perry on Scarefest TV tonight. I almost said Paranormal Filler because Dustin was such a regular guest on my show that it, it just kind of wanted to roll off my tongue there. Now, I do want to point out that, yes, Dustin had the best hair, but Steve has the best skin. That oh, my God, a, yes, he does. It's his a beautiful man. Routine, his nighttime routine, I am envious of it. Like, but back in the early days of Ghost Hunters, we used to have to share rooms, and Steve and I would often kind of bunk together. Um, and he's got, like, creams and lotions. <laughs> that, like, he would get mad if I gave you his secrets. But the, the guy's got, <laughs> got the skin of a goddess. It's like the ass of a cherub. It's amazing. It really is. <laughs> I think his, and I'm not kidding, I think his mom was involved, I don't know if it was Avon, but I believe his mother was involved in some type of skin cream line sales or something. But I was, yeah, just, sure, he, I, I was just sure he was eating babies or something, I don't know. Well, yeah, you know, there's there's there's, there's rumors about everything, I guess, <laughs> but uh, I don't think he would ever eat babies. But no, he's got, he's got beautiful skin, he's a handsome man. And I also want to say, now, the trolls were right about that fucking visor. <laughs> Come on, man. <laughs> hey, listen, I, I grew up watching wrestling, and I still love wrestling. And and I, I read their autobiographies, which, you know, those horrible books that people write about themselves. <laughs> I, 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 I love reading the books, and I love I love watching wrestling. And the guys will say, I can't remember which one it was in particular, but he's like, the worst thing that can happen is for you to step out there to the ring and no one react. They can boo you. They can scream at you and hate you. They can applaud you and love you. But the worst thing that can happen is no one to even know you're out there. And so um, for me, coming in as a, a tertiary player in season two of Ghost Hunters, um, I wanted to make sure I peacocked a little bit and had something <laughs> to kind of stand out. So I already had the crazy hair. I was like, I, it was like a Mona Lisa that just needed a frame, you know? So then we put that upside down visor I used to wear when I would go out to parties and stuff in college. And uh, yeah, it was, you know, it was, it was aerodynamic. It was functional. It would hit the ceiling if it was low, so I knew I had a duck. So all these things worked. It's just behind-the-scenes magic people didn't appreciate. But... Katie, what do you got? Um. Okay, so on the note of if I die, I was thinking about this this week. Where am I going to hunt? Yeah. And I think I'm going to hunt where I work, and I'm, I'm going to torment my coworkers. Hmm. If you had to hunt a location, where would you hunt? Probably Disney World. Hell yeah. Magic that Kingdom. Was, yeah, hang out Magic Kingdom. Be like this random like ghost that doesn't always appear in the Haunted Mansion. <laughs> like it becomes like a legend. Like, no, I actually saw this guy. They're like, no, it's a haunted house. Like, no, no, this is this is the ghost of T. Perry chilling out in Disney. That's what I would absolutely do. Okay, but is that a, like a criteria of being on the TV show Ghost Hunters? Because every single fucking one of you guys loves Disney. <laughs> yeah, it's a weird thing. It really is. But we all just, we all just naturally have that, and I think it, it might, you know, I think it ties into um, our appreciation of like the unknown and that kind of stuff. Because a lot of like the the early Disney cartoons, like the Skeleton Dance or the Lonesome Ghost, like there's a lot of cool Halloween stuff. They have Disney's Halloween Treat, so they embraced Halloween when a lot of mainstream 
Like it just didn't do it. You used to get, you know, it's a great pumpkin, Charlie Brown, and the Garfield special, which nobody Garfield ever remembers. Special is awesome. Okay. It's like it's the best. It's a musical. It's so much. I sing that song all the time, and I'm so in the shower good. in the morning. Uh, the it. Legend of Sleepy Hollow is my go-to oh, yeah. Halloween. The old, it's, yeah, uh, old right. cartoon. Yeah, and that's an old Disney one too. So yeah. see, it all ties in. Well, see, you mentioned you went to Steve's house. I painted him a picture from the Haunted Mansion and gave it to him, I think, 2015. Really? Uh, so, see, now that I know you all love Disney, that helps me. Now I make friendship bracelets for people. So, oh, nice. you get a friendship bracelet. <laughs> all right. I'll, I'll look forward to it. <laughs> um, now, since you've been in this, the internet has changed a lot, Dustin. And yes. now, yeah, a whole lot. Um, <laughs> do you think it's a good thing or the bad a bad thing the people that okay i'm i'm trying to think how to frame this i this got into ghost hunting yes. i got into ghost hunting because of you guys i watched you all on tv and said i can i can do that probably better but now that's arguable but i mean that that was you know um and i said i'm going to get out of this chair and i'm going to go do it now i I've seen, there's a lot of very, very successful YouTube shows. Mm -hmm. And, of course, now TikTok's out, so now they're ghost hunting in 60-second increments. But I'm seeing, I personally am seeing a lot of a lot of bullshit out there. What, yeah. How do you feel about it? Do you yeah, think that's a good thing, bad thing? Um, I think it's always a good thing where there's an opportunity for people to share information. Um and it's a good thing for everybody to have an opportunity. And and so there's there's good in the fact that we've gotten to a point now where you don't have to have um, a network behind you to make a show if that's your passion. So I think that's fantastic. Um, you know, the guys and ladies like uh, the Destination Fair crew, like doing good stuff, really good people. Kalani, uh, Ghost Hunter Kalani, great guy. Um, so I've had a chance to meet some people that I think are doing it with really good intention. And other people are like, oh, well, they're making money off it. It's like, well, we didn't do TV for free either. So like, let's let's get down off the cross. Now, I will stand up for people that make money on it. If you can make yeah. money doing what you love, God bless right. your heart. Yeah, absolutely. But again, the double-edged sword comes in the fact that with the advent of such easy access to putting information out there, like with every other dang thing, we get in lots and lots of uh, misinformation. And there's a lot of clickbait things. There's a lot of demon this, demon that. We're a fear-mongering society, uh, everything from, from our politics or our entertainment. And it's it's what we always say we hate. We go on Facebook, and everyone's like, I want light and love and peace, and I love everybody. And then they're flipping people off in traffic. They're hitting people in the grocery store because we want to be great, but we're just not great all the time. But I kind of feel like we just have to embrace that, our commonality is that we're all kind of screwed up, and just try to be better every day. If we can just try to be a little bit better, I think that does make a difference. Um, there's that ripple effect of kindness that I'm just trying to keep people going. But, yeah, it's tough when you see some stuff when it's like, that's not real. You know, you look at some of the, I mean, there's always fake evidence and, you know, even with TV shows, like there's some stuff that if you've investigated a long enough time, you watch some of the, the things that are presented, like that's, that's not real. That's not possible. That's not how it works. Um, and so I kind of feel like, unfortunately with the, the ease of access to, to uh, putting things out there with TikTok and stuff, there's going to be a lot more misinformation, but there are still some really good people trying to do things for the right, right reasons. And I think those with the, the pure hearts that want to see it will seek out and sort through the nonsense and the trash to, to get to, to what they really care about. Well, you've got a lot more faith in humans than I do. I have to believe every damn day. <laughs> I have to believe. They don't make it easy, but I have to believe. Like, I've always said, because I, I don't watch a lot more of the ghost shows. I never did. Uh, I watched Ghost Hunters and Ghost Hunters International. That was my bread and butter. But you guys didn't just investigate. You gave people the tools to be good investigators, what to look for in evidence, how to use the equipment, uh, and to not just call demon on everything. So I think that's always what made you guys be special, in my opinion. But... Thank you for that. Uh, yeah, we did try to do a lot of work with educating the homeowners that we have places we investigate um, and also to pass along good information that to people out there that want to try to do the same thing. But, you know, I always try to tell people too, like, 
don't all sing from the same hymnal. Like, try different things. It's okay to try things that you don't see on TV. And maybe you think it's some weird idea and other people, like, think it's stupid. But, like, at least try it. Like, you're not, as yeah. long as you're not doing anything harmful, you know, you're not hurting anybody yourself. Like, try it. See what you get. Like, this is still a field that has so much things for us to discover. And I think the beauty, beauty of it, excuse me, is that we'll never know all that there is to know. And I think that's really important. I love the fact that there's still magic in the world. And uh, the paranormal is a big part of that. And I want to get up every day and believe that people can be better people, Wes. And then also believe that there's still magic out there and things that we'll never fully understand. Yeah, give your ass 10 more years. We'll come back in 10 years. Okay. That's where I'm at. I agree, though. Um, I, I actually thought of Jason Hawes once. I, want, I, I learned a tip from old Jay. Yeah. But we, I went to this location. It was a homeowner, and she said that she had a demon in her house. She was smelling something really sulfuric. And her toilet line was dry. Oh, jeez. I learned that from God. Oh, that's fantastic. So I was like, ah, we need to pour some water down in that. I saw that on Ghost Hunters once. <laughs> that's fantastic. My God, I have to tell him when I talk to him. That's, I'm, I'm we get so many people plumber. like, oh, so many people like, oh, you taught us how to debunk, or you taught us how to do this or that. But I didn't know that ever the plumbing tips actually made made a difference. Mm -hmm. That's great. Started using TurboTax because of Jason Hall. <laughs> oh, forget about this commercial. Like, <laughs> oh. I was so excited when that commercial came out. Hey, I started eating donuts because of this guy right here. Hey, oh man, I had two today that were so good. I just this is why I have to go to the gym all the time. Like, cause it's just it's a nonstop balance of things I like to eat versus time I need to spend in the gym. What's your favorite kind of pie? Pumpkin. Pumpkin is the best pie there'll ever be. Um, I mean, as, as long as you're not, you know, sometimes people consider pizza, pizza pie. But when, when we're no, talking no, dessert, that's not. dessert pie, it's going to be pumpkin. Pumpkin with, with a whole can of whipped cream on it. Mm. And uh, yeah, it's the best. I, I think of really you when I eat pie, actually. Yeah. Uh, yeah. All good things. <laughs> that's not creepy at all. No, I not at all. <laughs> well, right. have you had derby pie? Yes, I've had derby pie, yeah. Indeed. As I travel around, I try to make sure I get to try all the local ones everywhere. All so. the local pie, yeah. Yep, absolutely. I, I do want to... I used to be really skinny, and then I worked at a donut shop, and <laughs> <laughs> they were like... I'll that. vouch for her. I saw her prom picture. She was. She was, she was a stick. hot little chick now. Yeah. <laughs> now I'm just funny. <laughs> Okay, Dustin, uh, what's coming up on the calendar for you? We won't get you here till October. You got anything yeah. you want to push in the immediate future? We got a lot of cool things going on. I've been um, I've been doing this new type of event series called Spirit Quest. Um, it's just me and uh, fifteen investigators at a location, and it's all very spirit driven. Uh, we look at the history of spirit communication. We try old ways. We do different things. We go walking in cemeteries barefoot and. It's 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 wavy gravy hippy dippy, hoodoo voodoo wonderful spiritual stuff, and I'm really enjoying that. And I think people get a lot of spiritual growth out of it. Um, my next one's gonna be up at the Hinsdale House, um, and um, February 24th. There's only like three tickets left for that one, um, but yeah, I've, I've got I don't know like 24 events this year, and uh, there'll be a, a, some news of a lecture tour coming up. Um, so just visit dustinperry.com/events. And I uh, hope to see some of you guys on the road, but then absolutely we'll be at Scarefest, a big return this year. And everybody, if you forget his name, it's on my website. I put a link to his website on mine just because I'm a hell of a nice guy. So everybody, and, and I do recommend his books. Really, I do. It's a little bit about him, admittedly. That it's one, yes. autobiography, but... <laughs> Thank you, guys. Yeah, all the books are on the website, too. Everything you want. All your Dustin Perry needs in one location. Yes. Well, thank you, Dustin. Thank you, guys. You have a great night. Appreciate you. Thank you. And everybody, don't forget my friends, the Spirit Mechanics. They are now, they have their own brick-and-mortar store called the Missing Element Shop. The one-stop shop for Spirit Mechanics, Stevens Healing Vibrations, 
featuring metaphysical supplies, books, divination, altar supplies, tarot, and oracle decks, handmade glassware, and spirit boards. And you can check out Vibrational Sound Healing with Stephen. Stephen Tyree is a vibrational sound healer. He uses tuning forks and singing bowls in his practice. Through the use of directed vibration, he is able to aid the physical body in recovery and regeneration and the spiritual body in release of negativity and blockages. I did it once. I kind of liked it. I think it works. Spiritmechanics.com for the boys and check them out in the real world. 1018 East New Circle Road at the Missing Elements Shop. Hey, Scarefest fans. This is the second time I'm recording this review. The reason being is because I did the first one and then I came up with an idea and I, by the way, rarely do this, threw it out the door, just threw it away. And now I'm doing a review about two documentaries, two documentaries, sorry. The two documentaries, kind of the same, but kind of different. One of them, I highly recommend the second one. I recommend the second part. So let's start. The reason why I'm going to start with the second one first is because I want to talk about what goes wrong with documentaries. So the first one is called Living with Chucky. It came out in 2022. By the way, both of these are on Prime Video to watch if you have. And this was directed by Kyra Gardner. Kira Gardner, sorry. And basically what it does is it goes through the history of Chucky, of how Chucky came to be. Now, there's two big problems I have with this documentary. One, completely leaves out Tom Holland. Tom Holland's left out of a lot of these things. If you don't know who Tom Holland is, he directed the first Child's Play movie. has a screenwriting credit on it. I know Don Mancini wrote the original story. But a lot of the things that you like about Chucky actually came from Tom Holland. He did not do two or three or any of the rest of them. has nothing to do with them. Don, Man Dan Don, Man Don Mancini came back to write those. Big fan or a big, he's a big friend with Kirshner, the producer. They made a lot of these movies. So the first thing I don't like about this documentary is it'll leave some of the important people out. They're not interviewed on it. Now, he might have not wanted to do it because he's mad because he's, if you go on Michael Rosenbaum and listen to him, he's still mad that he's not gotten his due for a lot of the creative things that came with Chucky. Completely understand. The second part is it stars talking about what happens in the movies. Now, let me tell you something. If you're watching a documentary about said movies, You've probably seen those movies, and if not, you should go watch them and then come back and watch the documentary. Documentary should not tell you the plots of the movies. Skip the first third to a half of it. Where it gets interesting is that about two-thirds through the documentary, we find out it's directed by Tony Gardner's daughter. Tony Gardner was a special effects guy from the fourth on, or the fifth on, whatever. Okay? And then it starts talking about how movies affect families, how families are. what That part, fascinating. Now, the second documentary is about Robert England. And I have a great Robert England story that I will tell you if you grab me at a convention and buy me a cup of coffee. Robert England, fantastic with fans. Love him. Really nice to me the couple of times that we've talked, which has been very, very limited. His documentary, you should totally watch, and I love it because it's also on Amazon. And it deals with his career from the beginning to end, and he's through it. And they interview a lot of different people that weren't necessarily big stars that were with him at the beginning. Watch that. It's the way I love documentaries, okay? It's what I love. It's like there, there's there's history. So, you know, I do Bonehead Weekly, and there's a lot of interviews on that. I consider uh, what we do sometimes history. We're historians, right? Oral history, where we're getting people to tell their stories, and it's down for people, geeks like you and I, to later listen to or, or watch and find out, oh, that's the reason this happened, or that's the reason this came to be. So the Nightmare Dreamscape one, Robert England totally watched. Should you watch the check? It's not a terrible documentary. I just wanted to put them both together to give you an example of how to do it and how not to do it. However, the child's play, second part, fascinating. Talking about the families, the dynamics, how do you raise kids when you're off in Toronto and the kids are in LA and you got to make a living. Fascinating. Wonderful. So check out these two documentaries. They're documentaries about things I know you all love. But definitely check out the Robert England one, the Nightmare one. It's so good. It's so good. All right. This has been Joe Lewis a Bonehead Weekly. Go watch a couple of documentaries and learn a little history about the movies that you love. Hey, next week on Scarefest TV, The Council, the first Council episode of 2024. And, by the way, David Gerber was our winner tonight. He won um, um, tickets to 
Vet City Con in Bowling Green, but now he is out of state and says he don't think he can make it. So if you're friends with him and you want to go, ask him for the tickets. But I will be sending him, uh, I, I'll be getting his email, and he will have tickets that he can just forward to you. But David Gerber won our trivia question tonight. Do not forget our TikTok contest. Now, our video contest is for Scarefest weekend tickets.